today I'm reviewing the Australian Gold Botanical Tinted Base Sunscreen. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com. Check out my Patreon community or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so finally getting to this one, which I can't believe I haven't reviewed yet. I really had thought at some point I had reviewed this one, but... Several of you asked about it and commented about it, so I thought I certainly had to fit this one in. I can't believe I haven't done it yet. So, um, anyway, let's get right to it. I've got some real interesting things to talk about in this review. So, certainly stay tuned for that. So, uh, they call this a tinted mineral face lotion that is more than just powerful sun protection. It's gentle care for your skin. This non-chemical sunscreen lotion delivers a refreshingly luxurious powdery clean feel while the subtle tint seamlessly blends into most skin tones and washes away with just water. Specially designed for sensitive facial skin, this lotion won't clog pores and is fragrance free. Rich in vitamins and antioxidants from native Australian botanical ingredients, it allows you to enjoy the sun protected from both UVA and UVB rays. It is also water resistant for up to 80 minutes, also non-nano and reef safe. So some interesting things. And I just did a bit of Googling and this is not made in Australia, it doesn't appear to be. Uh, distributed by Australian Gold, Indianapolis, Indiana. <laughs> and then when I went to look it up, I don't even think it's sold in Australia. So very interesting fact. Australian gold. It's made with Australian botanical ingredients, but it's not made there or sold there. I don't think. I don't leave a comment. Anyway, I was going to leave a comment about the Outback Steakhouse, which is in the U.S., but apparently we just found out there are some in Australia. So I won't say the comment I was going to say earlier, but anyway. Some interesting controversy. Weigh in on it. Okay. My first criteria is packaging, no issues with the giant squeeze tube bottle, very effective, opaque, does a good job protecting everything from exposure to light and air. Uh, there is no denatured or drying types of alcohol in this, so that's always a good thing. Then in terms of fragrance free, so they comment on it um, in their about section, won't clog pores and is fragrance free. However, it does include one ingredient that is kind of fragrance related and that is eucalyptus extract so eucalyptus oil is very fragrant and is irritating to skin generally this has no real noticeable scent however it does include eucalyptus extract uh, the extract can have some skin soothing properties about it although it is potentially irritating to skin especially if you have more sensitive skin so it is pretty far down the ingredient list but I kind of get where they're saying it's not fragrance. It's fragrance free because it doesn't really have a scent. But eucalyptus extract, including it, is kind of iffy in my opinion because most people won't have issues with it. And I didn't have any issues and I do have sensitive skin. But there's going to be probably some people that are not going to react well to it because of that in there. So it's not the oil. If it had eucalyptus oil in it, I would really be upset. But it's got the extract, so I can see how they're trying to say it's soothing. And eucalyptus is everywhere in Australia because the koalas eat it. But uh, anyway, it's kind of misleading. So, Although, you know what's interesting? Some koalas will only eat certain types of eucalyptus, and they're very picky about it. So anyway, okay, I'll get off that point. So some people, well, most people, almost everyone will be fine. There will be somebody that... Is very sensitive to it that might not even know it so okay the manufacturing location so uh it appears to be made in the u.s and it doesn't appear that this sunscreen's even sell sold in australia i don't know i've got some of you friends from australia so is this available there leave a comment so that's what they say on their faq page so anyway it says are your products available in australia at this time no we don't offer our products in australia so okay whatever so let's get back to the SPF now. This has an SPF of 50, which is great. 30 is the lowest I'd recommend using on a daily basis. This, this one is 50, so certainly great. The UVA protection factor. So if you are a nerd like I am, 
If you go to their website, they have all the studies that they did. They did in vitro studies. They did in vivo studies and you can read them all. It's very fascinating. If you're a dork, I read it for like a half an hour. Um, so anyway, so they did a lot of studies on it basically and the effectiveness of it, which is very nice that they did that. Um, although I will say at one point they mentioned if you have excessive back hair, it will be removed by a technician. So it's kind of weird to read that, but it makes sense. I guess you gotta do it if you're gonna test it, right? So. Um, okay, so I really, based on reading the study, this is going to be a weird review. Sorry, guys. I'm just all over. Back hair, eucalyptus, koalas, Outback Steakhouse. How do they all fit together? They're all in my review. Okay, so I am satisfied that this provides decent uh, UVA protection. They did studies on the PPD, which is persistent pigment darkening and that's how a lot of european sunscreens are rated um based on the everybody they tested which was a group of 10 people they came up with a ppd of between 17.5 and 20.8 which isn't awesome like we've seen some sunscreens like the bioderma that had a ppd of 42 i think anything 16 and above technically in the u.s would be considered broad spectrum so this one does provide Decent UVA protection, not the best. So if uh, pigmentation, hyperpigmentation is a super issue for you, this one probably might be one to pass, but overall it's decent. So, um, yeah. So not super exciting numbers, but not, I mean, there's ones that are much worse. So, okay, the filters used in this one, and when we get to the antioxidants and beneficial ingredients, I'm going to talk a little bit more about how some sunscreens can have identical amounts of percent of filters and have different uh, SPFs. So stay tuned for that. So we've got 4% titanium dioxide in this one, which is a UVA and UVB ray blocker. Then it's got 4% zinc oxide, which is also a ray reflector or blocker, which is zinc oxide protects against UVB, UVA2, and UVA1 rays. Uh, and is considered to be the broadest range sunscreen filter available today. So, um, okay, then we get to white cast, and this one's really nice. So, this one is tinted. However, they have a beauty balm. They label it as a beauty balm, which has a very, very similar formula to this. And the formula of this one's pretty good for the most part. They have a beauty balm, which has three different shades, light, medium, and dark. So if this universal tint is not the best for you, if you're very, very fair or very, very deep tones, I would probably recommend going with the Beauty Balm, but just don't apply it like a Beauty Balm. Apply it like a sunscreen and treat it like a sunscreen. Apply it liberally because most people don't apply Beauty Balms liberally enough to actually get ac adequate protection from them. So keep that in mind. But overall, the tint for somebody that's medium well, I'm pretty light, but I don't know. It's good for me. It works for my skin tone, which is light. But I'm not very, very fair. So uh, keep that one in mind. But if you're on either side, either range, you know, you're very, very fair, very, very deep, check out their BB cream because that one seems to be uh, one that might be a better option for the tint. But overall, it doesn't have a white cast, so uh, although it's tinted. So the texture of it. I kind of enjoy it's got a kind of a gel lotion type texture which uh, I have no issues with it's a little bit thicker so keep that one in mind so it does take a bit more effort to smooth into skin uh, but it smooths over skin man am I not putting this on right or what there we go um, so once you smooth it over skin it sets to a nice matte finish which is uh, absolutely not sticky at all uh, and it doesn't really transfer a ton either, which is nice. It's probably because of the water resistant, something in the formula that makes it uh, not transfer a lot. So no issues out with texture, really enjoy it. Uh, ease of use, very easy to use, smooths over skin pretty nicely and pretty easily, although it does set rather quickly, so you have to work quicker to smooth it into skin and to get make sure you're having a good even application. So you do have to work a bit faster with this one just because it dries quickly 
Um, the tint seems to really smooth up my skin tone at least. And for me, I find it gives me a bit of a healthy glow, which is really nice. Um, foundation applies really easily over the sunscreen. The sunscreen kind of works almost as a nice primer and no real issues with pilling unless you have several, several layers of skincare products underneath it. I didn't have any issues with pilling. So um, keep that in mind. So very easy to use. Then we get to antioxidants, which I, I want to talk about for a little bit. Okay, let me get through the first couple ones. Shea butter, great for hydrating, great antioxidant. Panthenol, great for hydrating and skin repairing. Then we've got something called red algae, Porifa umbilicus extract, which is a type of algae that can assist in protecting the skin from UVA rays, uh, which I read a couple studies from P PubMed. Um, and this one I took out of the PubMed. Um, red algae produce a technically and commercially available UVA sunscreen. The strongest UVA absorbing compounds in nature are the microsporine like amino acids. These are water soluble substances found in a number of lower organisms such as cyanobacteria, red algae, which is what we're talking about, the red algae, um, dinoflagatels, corals, and marine invertebrates. The basic chromophore is responsible for UV absorption. Corals that live in the clear, shallow water, which is a UV-intense environment, are found to produce 13 different MMA, MAAs, MMA, a, MMA. Mountain lakes are another UV-intense environment because exposure to UV increases with altitude and because the water is normally very clear so UV can penetrate to depths of 20 meters. Seven different MAAs were detected in the zooplankton of mountain lakes in the central Alps. The red algae, Porifia umbilicus, is reported to produce MAA, MAAs, Porifia 334 and Shinorine. Their filter capacity is similar to that of synthetic UVA sunscreens such as butyl methodismethane and terephyladine dicamphor sulfonic acid. Uh, Porifica umbilicus lives in all oceans at the shore area and on rough surfaced rocks. It is a small algae. That was fascinating when I read that. That was absolutely fascinating to me that this algae which has been put in the sunscreen is they're saying can be as effective as some uva chemical filters that to me was fascinating because um snow giraffe left a comment a few days ago and was asking this question which was something i was researching a couple weeks ago because i was noticing this sunscreen has the identical percentage of these filters to this sunscreen but this sunscreen is spf 30 and this one is spf 50 and i'm like why is that and how can that be and i didn't understand it and i was googling it and i still didn't really find an answer i just wanted an answer this is the answer and instead i got you know this could be from this it could be from this it could be from this it could be the shit you know yada 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 but i didn't get an answer but to me this is an answer that if you include this Porifica umbilicus extract, red algae, in your sunscreen, it's really going to boost the effectivity, effect, is that a word, the efficacy <laughs> of the UVA protection factor. It's really going to increase that without adding more filters and things like that. So I was very excited when I read that because that was the answer I was looking for. I just want to know. So the basic answer is why if this has 4% zinc and this has 4% zinc, why is this one SPF 30 and this one's SPF 50? It's because of other good beneficial ingredients in there. It might not specifically be that algae, but there's other ones that do the same thing. So it was very fascinating to me and I'm so happy I finally found some bit of shred of evidence from PubMed because I can't just base it off, well, someone thinks this, someone thinks this, it's gotta be from this. I want somebody that researched it that has an answer. So that's the answer, anyway. So that might make this, it's got 4% zinc, 4% titanium, but it's got that red algae in there, which boosts that and makes those work so much better. So anyway, I'm such a dork. Okay, anyway, so when brands include ingredients like this in a sunscreen, it can significantly increase the amount 
of UVA rays the sunscreen can protect against. Therefore, it is hard to compare sunscreens based solely on uh, the active filters. You aren't necessarily comparing apples to apples. Antioxidants and beneficial ingredients can play an important role in SPF. So thank you, PubMed. Uh, then we've also got a few more ingredients. Squalane, good antioxidant, hydrating ingredient. Uh, Kukadu plum, good antioxidant, uh, brightening ingredient, source of vitamin C, and then vitamin E, also a good antioxidant, hydrating ingredient. Okay, then we get to acneogenic ingredients, and this one doesn't have a ton, but it's got a few. Uh, zinc oxide, obviously, is one. Squalane is one. Shea butter is uh, fungal acne trigger. Uh, then we've got steric acid and vitamin E, so not a ton, but a few. Uh, something to keep in mind. Not a whole lot, and most of those, for the most part, aren't very highly comedogenic, but um, something to keep in mind. Okay, then we come to animal testing, and this is cruelty-free, so no issues with that. Then we've got performance. In my opinion, the sunscreen wears well throughout the day. It doesn't get greasy. Uh, it doesn't get oily, even at the end of an 8, 10 hour, eight to 10-hour day. No issues with it. Um, the other nice thing, it doesn't have a tendency to accentuate dry patches, which is also nice. Some mineral sunscreens I've found can really accentuate any dry areas of your skin. And this one, I didn't find that problem at all. Um, so it's a great uh, mineral daily sunscreen option. Uh, then we come down to price. And this is the full size, which is three ounces. And I want to say this might be one of the largest sunscreens. Well, that Alter Sun was pretty large, but... Um, so three ounces, 89 milliliters, and it retails for about $13.99, which makes it 15 cents per milliliter, which is one of the most affordable sunscreens I've reviewed all week. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so very affordable, large bottle, which is nice, and it's not going to make you feel like skimping to save money. So that's always a good thing too. Okay. So overall 15 being a perfect score, this one got a 13 Although, I got really excited about this one. So, as you can tell, I'm such a dork. But anyway, pretty darn good. So, I'm interested in hearing from you guys. A lot of you asked me to review it. So, if you have thoughts on it or have tried it, leave a comment. Or if you're trying anything else from the brand, uh, what have you tried and how have you liked it? So, leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. And stay tuned for more tomorrow until May 2nd, which will be the finale live stream. So, thank you so much.